Hello, Cancer. Welcome to your tarot reading here on Dove and Serpent Tarot. Please hit the like button, leave a comment, consider subscribing to the channel, especially if this reading resonates with you. Now, this is going to be a general reading, so try to be open and receptive to whatever may come through during our time together. I am merely the messenger, and I ask you to connect directly with each of these cards and use your own intuition to take you beyond the details that I might provide, okay? And remember, Cancer, that the most important part of any tarot reading is you. And there is a Queen of Cups. Now, I feel like we've been getting the Queen of Cups pretty often lately. But let's put that into some context using our Dove and Serpent spread. And as I do this, I would also like to say that if there's anything you need me to pray over or meditate upon uh, or send positive energy toward, please let me know in the comments. Okay. Now, finishing up Path of the Serpent. Well, it seems like there's a lot of court cards today. Um, we'll see if that is significant as we go through. We're going to do a mystery card, bonus card, confirmation card. We're going to use the Wade Smith deck. And this is the card that we set aside. We don't look at this. We're going to set it oops, right over here, frog on top. And we're not going to look at that until the very end. Okay. And hopefully that card can you know, tie everything together, give us the confirmation that we need at the end of the reading. So we've got Major Arcana, Major Arcana, two of those. We've got some water, some earth, some fire, some air, some water, a little bit more air, and then some fire with that Major Arcana. Actually, both of these Major Arcana are fire cards. So it seems already that there's a pretty interesting juxtaposition between the fire cards and then the water cards, right? And then we've got a little bit of air, a little bit of earth too. So it's not it's not too imbalanced, right? It's pretty good. We start with this queen of uh, cups here. I think you are someone who is really working hard to um, get in touch with your emotions, okay? This card is all about emotional transparency. This is about um, someone who is striving to kind of peek behind the veil of their own their own psyche, their own feelings. Um, I feel like, well, we got to do this one together. I feel like you're really in a place right now where you're, you should be working in uh, inwardly, working beyond that veil, trying to get behind the veil, I guess, um, and understand how you feel about a certain thing. And we're going to get to that if, if we can kind of narrow it down to what this is. But I feel like you've got a lot of... Um, a lot of feelings within you that you're trying to sort out and you're trying to understand. We got the prince of so uh, princess of swords here. You're trying to understand what these feelings, um, what this kind of emotional stirring that you feel within is, is resulting in, what its purpose is, what it's for, and how to express it. Okay. So these two cards together really tell me that there's this effort to really discover how we feel about things, right? Um, and then kind of try to reason out the why and the implications of that, okay? So I feel like you're someone who is very, very intense right now. You're in a very, um, very intense period of this kind of emotional investigation, emotional introspection. Okay, these two together, this is a real... I re really get the sense of investigating, um, of trying to discover, right? And what we're discovering is the ace here, right? This is down beneath everything. This is what we're trying to find, right? This is the source and seed, the core of all of our feelings, good and bad. Uh, this is our sense of purpose, of destiny, of finding the meaningful life, right? Discovering what the meaning is to our life. Maybe not to life as a whole, um, but at least we could try to find out the meaning of our own kind of unique and individual life, right? I think we're on a path of discovery. And I think the, the first step in that is for you to try to investigate how you feel about things. What are your likes? What are your dislikes? What types of people, places, things, what kind of situations make you feel joy? 
what kind of people, places, things, situations make you feel um, the opposite of joy, right? Either maybe anxiety or anger or displeasure or, you know, or pain or sorrow or something like that. Okay. So it's really, it's, it's a, it's kind of an intellectual approach, I guess. I was going to say it's a little bit scientific. Um, I'm almost surprised that we don't see a six of swords here, maybe the mystery card, because I feel like this is something that you're writing down, you know, and maybe that's covered by this princess of swords here. You're taking all of these feelings, you're kind of, you're feeling them in a way that you can think about them, right? And then with the earth aspect, that was the water, then the air. Now the earth aspect is writing that stuff down giving it a concrete form, okay? So these two together are really strongly indicating that for me. I'm getting this feeling of a lot of emotion. We're trying to understand it mentally, intellectually, right? We're trying to uh, put words to it. And then those words need to be put down on paper or in a computer or whatever. Whatever way you can kind of manifest them in, in a... Um, in a crystallized form that you can then save. I don't know. Do you save your journals? Um, do you do you burn your journals? Some people uh, I was reading they they burn their journals after a time. Uh, some people save them. I have all of mine in a box in the basement. You know, um, one day I might read through them or give them to my daughter or burn them. I don't know. Uh, so maybe you let me know in the comments if you if you do keep a journal or if you're going to try um, as kind of a homework to this reading. Sometimes we give a little homework here. Uh, if you're going to try to make a, a record or an expression of what you're learning about yourself through this introspection, right? Trying to peek the, behind the veil of your, your own feelings. Um, what are you going to do with that? Are you going to save it? Are you going to give it away? Are you going to burn it or bury it or throw it in the ocean? Maybe don't throw it in the ocean unless it's biodegradable. Then maybe. Um, <clears throat> maybe check Reddit for that one because I don't know if we can do that. I don't know if burning it is a good idea either or burying it. I don't know. Maybe compost it. Um, but that's just the first step because then, you know, that that's a way I think of processing what's going on and you know, having a, a cathartic experience, kind of releasing that, uh, that emotion. But what does that mean for us in our practical lives? Okay. Well, let's look at the recent past first, because I feel like you've had a big, big life change recently. Um, now, these, these readings are timeless. Okay. So I feel like whenever you're watching this, this, this reading was meant to find you. Okay. So this, even though it's in the position of the recent past or what's behind you, uh, it could be that this is still yet to come. Uh, but this is the the door through which you are walking that is kind of this new realm for you. Okay, this is kind of where you're going to feel a lot of this, uh, this depth of emotion and feeling and where we're going to try to discover this Ace of Cups down here. Now, this is a big life event. This is a big, probably a decision, right? A really, really big decision that has now affected the rest of your life, right? Um, whether, you know, if, if this is a, a career thing or a family thing or a spiritual thing, a, a life decision, whatever you choose is really affecting the rest of your life. And we have to understand how we feel about that, what it means for us, what it means for the future. Okay. I think this was a painful decision. It's not something that you kind of can just choose on a whim. There was uh, a lot of forethought. There was a lot of a lot of strength and resolve that had to go into this. It's something that you could have probably picked an easier route, made an easier decision and, you know, it would have been obviously easier. But I think you did what was difficult because up here we have this 9 of uh, wands. My cat's scratching at the studio door again. Uh, my wife will let her in. Um, so we have this nine of wands here at the top, and I feel like this was 
This was you intentionally choosing the difficult, get difficult decision, you know, uh, embarking on the more difficult path. And I think that's a, um, I think that's a very interesting tactic for us cancers, right? Um, sometimes, sometimes, a little bit of a tangent, not all the time, but sometimes cancers may be compelled to choose the easier of the paths, okay? Um, for me, I know it's easier for me to just say no and stay home in my little shell, in my, you know, in my, my studio or, you know, in my favorite chair or at my desk or something. And just be at home, just to say no to things and not engage and just kind of stay home. This is easier. This is more comfortable. But I think as cancers evolve, um, you know, towards the Leo energy, I feel like we've got to start making the difficult decisions. You know, we've got to start pushing ourselves and challenging ourselves to do a little bit of what's uncomfortable, right? A little bit. If our first instinct is to say no and stay home, stay in my pajamas, my bathrobe, um, I'm going to try to do what might be a little bit difficult and say, okay, I'll go. Maybe I'll only stay for a minute or two, but I'll go. I don't want to have to say anything. I don't want to have to talk, but I'll go. <laughs> and then I'll come home quickly, you know, step by step, little baby steps to begin with, you know. I feel like you've kind of done something out of the ordinary. I feel like you've made a really big step. Not a baby step. You made a, a giant leap. Because I feel like this was a major decision. This was something that is very uncomfortable to do, but you've chosen to do this, or you will choose to do this, uh, because it does open up this door for your future. Now, because we have this Ace of Cups down beneath everything, I feel like you're on the path to really discovering what your purpose is. And it could be that you've taken this new job, you've started a new course in university or school or some kind of a technical, a craft, a trade. Um, you've left home, you've left a job, you've made some very major decision that was uncomfortable to make. But you know that it's getting you closer to discovering, right? Uncovering this that's buried down underneath all of this other energy. My cat's still trying to, I should let her in. Um, so the ace. This is what we want to know about ourselves, right? This is what I think most of us are trying to find. If you found it already, or those that have found it already, it's a true blessing, right? To, to get in touch with that center, that seed, that core of ourselves that um, knows when it's in the right place. This is your heart of hearts. It's the inmost inner sanctum, the sacred chamber of your being, right? Where your deepest, most holy secrets are. And to discover this chamber within us, you know, really gives us a sense of who we are, what we're doing, where we're meant to be. And this is that knowledge, really, that gnosis. It's a, it's a divine knowledge, a direct experience of the, the right or wrong of what you're doing. Now, not in a, not in a moral sense, right? Morals as in um, our standard of behavior just based on the kind of consensus around us in our society. But no, this is a real sense of the uh, correctness or the incorrectness of what you're doing in terms of your spirit, your destiny, your soul, your, your innermost holy of holies, right? So this is uh, an ethics that really requires this investigation, right? And it's the standard of your behavior. And this is what you would, you would check all of your activities against, you know? And in any moment, it doesn't matter if you're choosing different jobs, if you're still looking for the right career, if you're still looking for the right relationship or trying to choose where you want to live permanently. Um, every step of the way, you're checking in with spirit. You're checking in with this Ace of Cups to, to, to know with certainty, is this right? Does this feel right? Okay. Now, because this is an Ace, 
It's the number one. You may think that this is the one thing that you're supposed to do with your life, right? Your one kind of true path, the one meaning or purpose for your life, the one thing you're supposed to be doing. No. This card, it, it is basically the number one, but it is also all of the other numbers. This is everything all at once. So it's not that we have to limit ourselves to just one particular career. You could change careers every day if you wanted to. But the underlying motivation behind it, the underlying purpose, the theme, the little thread that you can trace through all of those careers or all of those relationships or all of those studies or activities or whatever, that thread is the ace of cups. It's running through every choice that you've made, right? And um, so the ace of cups is not so much what you're doing, but how you're doing it and why you're doing it. This is more of an active card. It's a it's an odd number, right? So it's the it's the original activity. It's the first odd number, right? The first motion. And this is the how and the why you do what you do, rather than what the details don't really matter that much. Do you know what I mean? And that brings us over here to this five of discs. These are the details. These are the activities and they're changing. Five, another active number. This is probably you going through many different iterations of this, this ace in your practical life, your daily life, you know, your horizontal world, uh, going through many different careers, many different jobs or relationships or studies. Maybe you're changing your major every five minutes, you know. Um, maybe you are testing the waters, no pun intended, with different uh, charities or religious organizations or community organizations, trying to find that one spot that, that gives you that Ace of Cups feeling, you know, and that's, that's when you know that, okay, this is where I'm supposed to be. This feels right. The, the why and the how um, are, you know, they feel right, right? I feel in harmony with that Ace of Cups. So I think that this, while this card does mean a lot of kind of instability, a lot of variables, a lot of movement, shaky ground, maybe some anxiety that comes along with it, I feel like this is what we're after because we made this definite decision to discover our purpose, the meaning for our life, our essential core of our being, who we are. And we are we have the strength and the intelligence to experiment, to try different things, right? And the important thing is no matter what you're trying to be true to this ace of cups, the why and the how are up to you. The what can change every five minutes, right? And that's going to bring us over here to the path of the serpent. And we start with the princess of cups. So we, we started first with the queen of cups, right? The water and the water, the veil, right? Trying to really discover and harmonize with our feelings, our true emotions, not just our our uh, attractions and our aversions, right? Not just the surface level feelings, but the really deep emotional body, the, the core of our emotions, right? Our heart of hearts. You can hear my cats running around now uh, that they, they've gotten into the studio here. Um, they're very excited for this fire energy that we're coming up on next. But first, the princess of cups, the earth of the water. This now is these emotions now that they um, we've gotten in touch with them. Now we can essentially uh, communicate with ourselves, not in this intellectual, mental, verbal way, but now we can experience our emotions fully because we've gotten past that veil, right? And it started out with the Princess of Swords, the giving form to those emotions through the written or spoken word, right? Now we're giving form to those emotions directly, right? Now it's being expressed through the why and the how of our activities, right? 
not so much what we do, because what we do is going to change, but through what we do, why we do it and how we do it, right? That's how you're expressing your essential emotional nature, right? This ace of cups that's, that's underneath everything. We've passed through this, this process if you've done your, your homework. And now we have this, this uh, communication, this, this kind of active dialogue. You know, it's this, uh, this Gnostic kind of experience um, with this Ace of Cups in our lives. And we're able to express that more directly in our choices, in our activities. Now, the next card is this Strength, Lust. This is the 11th Mystery of the Tarot. This is you... Um, fully immersing yourself in these activities, even if they change every five minutes. You're not just touching things surface level and saying, mm, I don't like it. You are really uniting with it in this kind of passionate embrace. Now, this could be relationship. This could be a romantic thing with someone. Um, this could be your changing your majors at, at university or school, choosing different technical trades, trying different careers, different employers, different jobs, different, different mediums for your creativity, right? The details here are just the medium of your expression. What you express, how you express it, why you express it is uniquely you and Ace of Cups, but... The medium through which you express yourself is this five of discs, okay? But in order to really fulfill this, you know, to maximize this, you've got to really commit yourself to each thing, even if it's only for five minutes, right? There's no half measures. You're not, you're not half-assing it, you know? Uh, this is a real commitment to what you're doing, even if that commitment is going to change, again, every, you know, every day, every, every six months, whatever it might be. Um, for the time that you feel that you feel drawn to certain, uh, certain media, you're going to fully immerse yourself in it. And that's the, the lust, that's the strength, that's the passion of this card. It's controlling this fire energy, which we've seen a lot of the fire energy already. I think you have the, the strength, you have the control and the commitment, the inner resolve here, the willpower. Um, this is this great enthusiasm, this great lust that feels uh, an intensity towards one thing and then towards another and another and another and another, towards everything, right? And this card's about control, having the strength, the willpower to control that impulse and fully commit to one thing. Give it the old college try. If, if, it, uh, if it stops resonating with you, you move on to something else. Right? But this is having the control to give it that initial uh, chance, that initial union. Right? So this is very important because this is a lot of this fiery, passionate energy that needs to be harnessed. Um, again, even if, you're, even if you're trying different things, experimenting all over the place, we still need to have control over that so there is a, a purpose and a direction in it. Now, the next card, this is what we don't want. This is the, the Ten of Swords. It's in the position of our fears, worries, and concerns. Right after that, we see a Prince of Swords. This could be an air sign person in your life. Okay. What we don't want is for our plan, our purpose to get completely derailed. And maybe this air sign person is who might be de trying to derail this or who potentially could derail this. Um, I don't think it's intentional, but th they could inadvertently um, cause us to derail ourselves. Okay, let's take some responsibility here. Um, because I, I feel like I feel like all of this is fine and well and good and this is this is wonderful energy. But there is always that risk that we'll get so wrapped up in something else that we just, we forget about this. You know, if this is our primary kind of work in our spiritual path, in our life, to do this, to take care of this energy, to process these things, and then along, along comes this one person, place, or a thing that just 
it's almost like we fall so in love with this one that we forget that we were ever doing any of this spiritual energy work, right? And we just almost get absorbed by this other energy. Okay, now this could be a person, this could be a certain career choice, a certain um, study, or whatever it is. This is really taking us away from this Ace of Cups. We need to come back to this Ace of Cups. Because this, this energy here is really, um, it's really dissipating, right? It is, it's taking our fire energy and this water energy with this Ace of Cups, and it's just kind of scattering it, where we can't focus, can't come together, and we, um, we run the risk of, of losing that direct communication. Right, we had a little bit of air energy here, which was useful for us in our kind of kind of homework assignment. But this kind of air energy, this is too much. This is really taking our plan, taking our whole, the whole system that we've built. This is taking the entire tree of life and just shaking it up and rearranging it and then just kind of shattering it where it's just, it's impossible to kind of glue it back together. And I don't know if this prince represents an air sign person or if this is the um, the representative of that ultimate distraction right that could really derail this whole thing or that could cause us to derail everything for this okay so when this uh, this is is like you know um, the enemy number one you know, this is that, that greatest distraction that we need to be on the lookout for if we want to continue this work and really live our lives um, with the, the Ace of Cups as our kind of guiding principle, right? As our guiding light. I want to look at the mystery card, though. I want to see if that maybe is a suggestion or a clue how to overcome this greatest distraction, this air energy at the end here. Um, thank you, Frog, for helping us with that card. Thank you, Alien. So this is either, either going to be some really stable Earth energy or it's going to be some major arcana that I think can overpower this air energy. Okay. It's the Queen of Pentacles. So this is some very strong earth energy that has as its core that water energy, right? It's the queen of pentacles, the water of the earth. So within this earth energy person is this ace of cups. So this is a representative of you. This is basically saying that, look, you are committed to your outward manifestation, your uh, activities, your behavior, um, all of your choices, all of the variables, the experimentation, the life that you're leading must have this Ace of Cups as its core, as its founding principle, right? So the Queen of Pentacles is someone who is just resisting these kinds of distractions um, unless they uh, kind of line up with this inner purpose, with this Ace of Cups. Okay, so this doesn't really tell us the how. I think the how is going to be very unique. I think it's going to be a struggle uh, to stay the course here. But you've got that Nine of, of Wands up there. That's a really good sign. And I think that we have to, we have to put ourselves, again, in those difficult situations uh, to kind of test our resolve. So when you encounter this greatest distraction, that's going to be a test of your strength. And this greatest distraction may happen again and again and again. Could happen every day. Every day is is a is an opportunity for you to stay on track, stay the course, stay committed to discovering your purpose and then living living according to that discovery. Very interesting. Very excited for this. I think this is going to be um, really great for us Cancers. We're going to do an extended. If you want to stick around, please click on the link that's up here somewhere. Um, I want to thank you for being here. Thank you for letting me read for you. Uh, hit the like button. Leave a comment. Consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. And thank you for being the most important part of Dove and Serpent Tarot.